Welcome to Fire Dojo. And today, I'm going to turn these two halves of plum into into this.
So uh, I started milling this one on the jointer at 8.35 in the morning and uh, it is now 8.50 after getting rid of the dust and uh, resetting up the camera. So what I've done is I've completely flattened one side. This is called a face. I did two edges, okay, and uh, so now I'm going to put this on the bandsaw in a minute and cut a board out, and uh, we'll get something out of that, right? So comparatively, this was the easier one than this one. This one has a, a pretty good bend in it, might be a little hard to see, and uh, this one's a little rough along this edge. Now these were cut out from, uh, this was cut with a chainsaw down the middle and really all I did was eyeball it. And I have to say it's it's pretty straight for something that I, that someone eyeballs with a chainsaw. So, but this one is going to be the more challenging one. So we're going to do that one now and then we'll put both of them on the bandsaw and uh, resaw out some boards and whatever pieces I can get out of that, okay? So here's the second one, and I got both edges flat. The only problems I might run into are these um, these cuts in here. But uh, I'm only going to be cutting this to two feet, and so an inch or two is going to come off there, and an inch or two is going to come off here. Anyway. So as you can see, the second one is not as wide as the first one. So what do we got? So the first one is six inches, which is good, because I need it to be a minimum of 5.5. And the second one is four and five eighths which is more than four and a half. And so I'll be making stuff probably out of this one. And this will be a board, most likely. So if this is a board, if this is a hearth board, that means this is gonna be like a bow and uh, Egyptian drill spindles and reloads and whatever else I can get out of here, a pressure hand brace, things like that out of this section so but you might be asking yourself why why get everything flat well it makes everything uh, you need these as what are called reference faces um, when you start doing other kinds of cuts you need like straight lines to work off of you can't just eyeball everything and uh, first of all it takes forever all right so right now It's uh, uh, 9, 10 in the morning. So I started milling this at 8.50 ish. <clears throat> and it's uh, 20 minutes later. I dumped out the dust from the, from the uh, vacuum, the shop vac. And uh, this is where I'm at already. See, I'm already I'm moving along faster than Holding on to the value of like everything has to be done primitively and like I'm going to carve it with a knife 
or whatever. And uh, so from 8.35 to 9.10, I've gotten two extremely flat faces and four extremely flat edges to work off of. Now I can uh, turn this one into a board and this into other things. So let's go. Lucky that I have my son now holding the camera, so this makes this much easier. So I just got done resawing uh, this plum. Now uh, to reinforce what I said, uh, when you cut something this way, that's called ripping. But when you cut something <clears throat> this way, vertically. That's called resawing. So I just got done resawing this half round of plum, and I have now what's called a. Uh, is it this one? It's this way. Uh, a book matched pair. book match pair. So you can see these line up. If I put these together, it looks like twins, as you can see, right? And uh, usually when you cut things this way, 
uh, you can lay out a very nice pattern. But that's not what we're doing today. So as you can see, I have all these saw marks from the bandsaw. And uh, this face, this is called a face. These faces are not perfectly flat. So what I want to do is um, I'm going to try and cut some more pieces out of this. So I'm going to flatten this face on the jointer. Get that flat. And now this is my board, but uh, this reference face, that mark is for a reference face. This is reference face because it's flat. This is a reference face because it's flat. This one is not. So you can see all the saw marks. So what I want to do is make this side parallel with this straight face, which is already done, the reference face. So I'm going to put this side through what's called a planer. This is a planer. And what it does is it flattens the top. So a jointer <coughs> flattens one side, which is usually the bottom. The planer um, uses this this table here is dead flat down here and the bottom face here which is flat is a reference there and then when you put this through here there's cutters in here and it takes off the top and makes it parallel with this face and as well as cleans all this up which we'll see later so I'm going to do those two things on not only that but this pair right as you can see because this is resawn it's a book match twin right and for woodworking and again uh, I'm going to try and get pieces out of this so we're going to joint this on here with this one and this is the reference face the edge is a reference the edge is a reference but you can see all the saw marks here from the bandsaw so we're going to put this through the planer here along with this one and we're going to flatten that all right so let's do that
there we have a brand new face. All the saw marks are gone. The pencil marks are gone. And this plum is very, very, uh, is a beautiful wood with all its purple streaks in it. So, all right, so now we got two flat sides that are parallel. So now I have two parallel boards. That's what time did I start? So we started around 12 doing that. It's now 12.20. All right. So what's gonna happen with these? I'm gonna make bows, like bow, uh, Egyptian drill bows. Hopefully get a pressure hand brace out of that. Some reloads, uh, possibly a spindle. But uh, a lot of that's gonna come out of this board, I think. This is gonna be the one hearth board. And I'm gonna make other parts out of these. So, now uh, that's four sides. So one, two, three, four, now I have to do the six sides, five, six. And what I do there is I get these to exactly two feet. Twenty four inches, twenty four inches. Where this is my cut line. Another cut line. Same with this one. Let's do this side. I'm gonna get it right in the middle. These ends are a little bit charred. So, 24 inches. 24 inches. There's our cut line. There's a square. There's my cut line. I'm going to cut on this side. I'm gonna cut on that side. I know what I'm gonna do, but if you need to reference this for someone else, you cut on that side of the line. Not on the line, on that side of the line. All right. Now we're gonna take a minute to set up the, the chop saw, or you can turn that on. All right, so I got out the, uh, the miter saw. And this is a sliding miter saw, meaning it, can, it doesn't just chop cut. You can actually cut uh, a good another eight inches there. So let's get started. Line that up.
The ends are cut square, and I got rid of the uh, the checks. You can see uh, from the quick drawing process because this was cut green. In the drawing process, the ends uh, check; they crack. So we got to cut below that to get rid of it. These areas here. You can see there's still a bit of a check there, but that's okay, because I'm going to use this for parts. All right. That's good, Jake. So this piece is uh, oddly shaped. Actually, I'm going to, we're going to switch. So this piece is uh, oddly shaped. As you can see, uh, there's like this crest along here that goes this way. And uh, this is too thin to do anything with, as is this side here. It's too thin. Can't really do anything with it. So what I got to do is cut out this middle section that actually has some width to it. So I'm going to do that on the bandsaw.
stand behind me. So that took place from 1 o'clock to 1.15 p.m. So now I have these sections, which I now need to flatten and straighten. So I'm going to do that on the jointer real quick. So I'm going to switch. Okay, so I was able to take out this one thick piece, right? So what I should do now is go back on the bandsaw and resaw this out. This piece here. This piece here, I'm going to cut that out. And I might just try to get sections out of here, at least for reloads or something. Maybe not this one, let's see. I might get a dowel out of that. I could def definitely get reloads out of this. If you could see what's in the wood, 
should be able to get it out of there. Right? This could end up as firewood, this piece of plumber. But we're going to turn it into a board. So, okay. Now I'm going to see if I can get this section out of here. I'm just going to eyeball this one. section of wood that would have been lost. It's not like you can go down to the store and buy plum as wood. So, right, let's clean up. this piece Something out of these.
these are pieces that would have ended up in the firewood pile that I can do something with. And look how colorful they are. This is plum. Prunus serifera, if I remember correctly. So aside from our hearth board and this board, which I'm going to get something out of, and uh, this one I still have to kind of figure out what I'm going to do with. I'll do that one next. Okay. Or you can cut. So I have me here a hearth board, which is about an inch and a quarter in width, two feet long. We got a board here that's an inch and a half in width, two feet long. And these are really heavy. Really, really heavy. I wish I had a scale. I could, uh, I could weigh these. So I'm going to get a, a good bow out of this one. I'm sure. Uh, maybe some handholds. I've got a handhold here. I'm going to make one out of. I'm going to figure out what to do with these little project pieces. I may make a uh, specialty hand drill spindle with this one. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Um, this is part one of uh, milling the plum and in uh, part two uh, we're going to finish um, making stuff out of out of this and uh, light it up. Alright? Until next time. See you later.